Hello, and welcome to Not Your End Step. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And we have another fun-filled episode for you, for you folks this week. Um, uh, plenty of stuff to talk about. We, we got, of course, some exciting bands uh, this, this Monday, and then uh, we have the Invitational. But um, before we jump into anything, I do want to give a, a quick and um, from the heart shout-out to all of our patrons out there who support a us Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving pa- shout-out. Thanksgiving shout-out, yeah. Of course, in the, in the States, we're on the verge of celebrating Thanksgiving. It's going to be next week, of course, so... Um, I just uh, thank you to, to all of, uh, all of you out there that do support us. We appreciate it. And if you want to jump on that, uh, that old bandwagon, you can do so by visiting patreon.com slash at your end step. Woods has jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah. The band wagon. Oh yeah. No, they don't support us. <laughs> I mean, I guess they support us by creating the thing that we criticize. We talk about? I say, I'm just saying criticize at this point. <laughs> I mean, it's fair. If, if I can call us a critical podcast that not critical role because that's a thing no, yeah, but like a thing. A critics podcast then we can like be john lovitz <laughs> that's, that's true that's probably about the quality of content we're really looking at yeah cartoon our, john our lovitz. sound waves are like wavy animation a la the critic so yes. it's all good uh correct so um you know this is probably gonna be a very fairly succinct episode uh this week um unless You're we welcome. get unless we get on some sort of you know weird sort of tangent or no, tirade we won't I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. But we might. <laughs> we might not. Yeah, I might regret saying we won't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Either one hour or maybe two. <laughs> now, who knows? So you'll know, and you, I won't at this point. No, this is so, it's a mystery. To us. It's a, it's quite the game. So, um, well, the first thing that we wanted to talk about, of course, are the the bands. So we had a bunch of bands that happened on the 18th of uh, November of this week, and. Um, starting off with Pioneer, there were no changes. So, no changes in Pioneer this week. Presumably none next week either, is what they said in the article. Which kind of makes sense. It's, again, uh, in the States, a holiday weekend. Probably don't want to... They want to see how things shape out. Right. All, um, all the stores are like, thank you for the Black Friday sales. Please don't <laughs> change the format right now. Right. And, um... You know, like I, they, you know, like we said previously, um, I think they they kind of just didn't want to shake the format up before the Invitational. Now, you know, with Veil being banned and like the results from the Invitational, they kind of just want to see where the format goes. And well, they also have like the PTQ Palooza. Yeah, that's as true well. as well. And they yeah. said, I think they're gonna, I think they're using that as like a, a big hammer on like lists. Yes. Like, let's see where we're at here. So, yeah. did you see uh, Todd Anderson thanking Wizards for all the chances to <laughs> come second place in a PTQ again? <laughs> that's very funny. I, I know he's just missed, but like. Man, you want to talk about somebody taking Pioneer and just like saying like this is my format, like <laughs> and yet yeah, to be to be honest, and, I guess and, I guess being flavorful to that word, I don't know, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> eh, yeah, um, <laughs> this is my format now. Yeah, and to be honest, like if you're not following Todd Anderson, great follow on Twitter. What is his current handle even? It changes so often. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, like his handle I, is always I'm strong. Appreciating, under- I'm appreciating Todd Anderson who like like now is just like full-time streamer his wife is like very successful w- working at blizzard like he's just like you know what i'm just living my best life now <laughs> more power to him more power to him um but um so that, that makes sense and and i think you and i are both you know pretty excited about pioneer still i'm gonna have my first time to like sit down and, and play some games with it this week hopefully at the uh, the gp that's gonna be local so um yeah that's that's fairly fun that's really exciting but Shifting over to another format, let's let's talk about. Where do you want to talk? Do you want to talk let's, small? Let's, let's go. Or yeah, large? Let's, let's go. We'll, we'll start with a format that we talk about the least. So we can move quickly. So let's sure. talk about vintage. So vintage, uh, Narset party of parter of veils, <laughs> party. party of veils, party of five. <laughs> the party's uh, banned, bro. <laughs> is restricted because they don't obviously ban cards uh, unless right, they're anti cards right. in vintage. They they typically restrict them. Um, so this means that you can only have one Narset in your deck. Um, but uh, this is a sort of the uh, you know the card that I think a lot of vintage players were were bemoaning. We're, we're, we're rightfully complaining about this. This can come down um, turn one um, pretty realistically and really nullify a lot of what you are trying to do within that format. And a lot of the ways that you interact with planeswalkers uh, don't exist <laughs> um, or, or aren't really effective. You know, you're not attacking them down. Yeah, I, all the problems they listed here are something that apparently. Uh, play design just learned. Yeah, so that's neat. Wild. I'm gonna reference that again later. Don't I bet worry. you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this makes sense. Um, the card's very powerful. Uh, locking your opponent, especially in formats that have like a bunch of draw sevens, where that are 
symmetrical, uh, but Nars that really shuts the door on that. <laughs> so I, I think this makes sense, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people you know, you are very happy. You can target me with Ancestral, right? <laughs> Because it's not going to do anything for you, so you might as well target me. <laughs> so I think this is a good change. Um, yeah, obviously. Like, these three mana planeswalkers are wrecking so many formats. Yeah. And, like, Narset, like, getting its place. In, like, Narset is now restricted among the likes of the literal Power 9. So, good job. Yeah, same power, same power level, definitely. I mean, in that format, <laughs> is pretty good. It's true. You know, when Narset shouldn't take down and find lands. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh yeah, that that that's yeah, a thing. Yeah, it's the thing. Oh no, it's, wait, it's, no, because Nars, yeah, Narset is um, it's a non-creature, it's non-creature right? Yeah, because it's uh, yeah, it's non creature. So yeah, nice. take down, take down, get Black Lotus. No, cool, sick. Um, so moving on, we'll we'll move on to Legacy here, and we'll see that Ren and Six is banned. Um, this makes sense. Ren and Six was just Deathrite Shaman two point oh. Um. And it with was with better, it with was better. much better than that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, like, so like, it could have been banned just for that philosophy. Like, Death Art Shaman was banned because it was just like making mana too easy. Sure, if Ren and Six was doing very similar things, being able to buy back your fetch lands and fix your mana. It, it, and they even mentioned it here, but it, yes, that's that's good. But the important thing here is that like one of the biggest mainstays in the format is Wasteland, and Ren and Six created like patterns of Wasteland locks that were just unbelievably harsh uh, on certain decks in the format. You know, you, you establish turn, you literally turn two, you have run in six, and um, every turn after that, you can play Wasteland if you need to. And yeah. that's uh, that's bad. Also, you had things like, they, they mentioned a bunch of the, um, uh, a deck that really disappeared um, was um, Death and Taxes, mm. which was for the longest time one of the critical ways that people could get into the format was Death and Taxes. Um, because you didn't have to buy like, dual lands and things yeah. like that. Uh, and that Run and Six, interestingly, single-handedly negated most of their creatures. So, yeah. Sad times. A little Modern bit. Modern Horizons messing with every format. Just, just, like, just busted. Again, we can see this now with both two mana and three mana Planeswalkers. <laughs> they sh- they strong. <laughs> I just, Anyway, uh, here's the thing. I'm fairly certain I'm on record on this podcast saying that Run and Six wasn't good, and I probably did that. And if I could go back in time, and like I, I guess I'm share now. If I could turn back time, yeah. if I could find if you the could way. Find a way. Uh, but yeah, um, I mean to be fair, right now it's not good in modern, the intended format for it. <laughs> I guess it's just because Jund isn't good. It's true. Um, so before we hit Sander, we're going to talk about Brawl, and um, this was is kind of foreshadowing. Um, Oko Thief of Crowns is now proper banned. So can we talk about that? So they are currently propagating three separate ban lists. Because Pioneer doesn't fit in with the regular ban list now. Yep. And Brawl, Arena Brawl, already had Oko banned, which was the only place you could play Brawl digitally. And when asked why that wasn't immediately a paper thing, they didn't want to keep those the same. But then they did. So there's two Brawl ban lists that now have the same card on it, but are ostensibly... Well, today the same two cards on it, but ostensibly are different ban lists. I don't have the answers you seek. I don't know that I'm seeking answers. <laughs> the blood that's currently dripping from my left ear says that I have the answers. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> I I don't know. I think that maybe they maintain this because, like, theoretically... You know, Brawl in Arena is only 1v1, while Brawl in Paper can be 1v1 or multiplayer. So if there was a card that was not warped in 1v1, but was warped in multiplayer, they could ban it. But they didn't make that discrepancy for I, Brawl when they banned it. I don't I don't know, man. Like, they didn't say it was like, it was just banned in Brawl. That was it. Yep. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm I'm nope. I'm, I'm playing fine. devil's advocate here. I'm not trying to say it's right or wrong. I'm the just saying the literal devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's fine. Uh, Oko's busted in brawl. Like he should never be a commander, and no, now he can never be a card in your deck. It's really weird <laughs> to have a commander that just like looks at every opposing creature <laughs> commander and says, "No, no. elk." <laughs> You're an elk, nice. That's a nice green elk. elk. How did you cast red cards? Your commander's clearly green in its color identity. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty oppressive um, to to have that as be being a thing. And um, you know what? Um, it really makes a strong argument as to why, like, 
the commander, like uh, the the rules committee, will probably drag their feet forever um, in making commanders, uh, making planeswalkers be able to be commanders in commander proper. Um, now, of course, they can just yeah, do they, that if, and ban Oko. Yeah, so if they make that decision, you, it comes with an Oko ban. One hundred percent. Yes, that's like the muscle arm meme right there, right? Yeah. Where it's like it's like planeswalkers as commanders, Oko's Oko banned. Band, yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So the last and the biggest is going to be standard, where we see uh, three cards on the chopping block here, which are Oko Thief of Crowns, Once Upon a Time, and Veil of Summer. Uh, so Veil of Summer, we kind of figured might happen. Yeah, it makes because sense. We're almost, into, we're almost into winter at this point. So. It's true. Yeah, we're, we're now, shifting It will out. be unbanned next it's summer. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It'll come back as, as Veil of Summer classic. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is something that... Uh, was a little bit foreshadowed in Pioneer. Now, those aren't necessarily one-to-one, you know, translations, but it, it makes sense. This is a card that is, uh, I would say, punching above its weight. Um, and I, I think, like, I've heard arguments for and against it, um, and, and people have definitely tried to make, like, passionate sort of um, claims as to why it should remain there and how this allows a green to, like, interact with those things. But um, it's just really powerful it's just absurdly powerful um it may be narrow but i think like one it, it's not as narrow as, you, right. as people are saying like not you can not to you know undercut your point but no like, no no the people that say that like like it's narrow like it's not that narrow i don't know what to tell you um what you know they they, they compared it to some other cards they've tried to do and we've had what we had um summer's uh, or autumn something I don't know the autumn first sale autumn sale that's what it is yeah. and then we had uh, with display of dominance yes which so I think almost no play um, and, and it's a two mana but this like this version of this card like does just too many things like it it saves you from counter spells it counters spot removal it counters discard interaction and it does it at a two for one rate and that's where so it's like it, you could it, maybe you could do all three of the first thing. But then not draw a card. Yeah, um, it, it drawing a card is like such a such a wild it, it's thing. A, I mean, like I said, when it was great, that I already saw the axe in Pioneer. Yeah, but I said like if you played Pioneer those first few weeks and you got to like cast Veil of Summer when your opponent casts Lotsies on turn like their turn one, like <laughs> like if you weren't playing Magic anymore. Your opponent quit the game right then. But like you were literally you were so far ahead. Yeah, it, it is disgusting. So, and I said that you know we played when I played at regionals. Uh, I, I mentioned how like I realized that Crypto Command was bad, like mm. it's actively bad because their one mana Crypto Command countered my Crypto Command right. that I paid three blue mana symbols for. Yeah, fun. So neat. And here's the thing: I'm comparing it to Crypto Command, which is objectively one of the most powerful spells ever printed in the game of Magic. And the one mana greens instant from the core set that's in print currently. Sure. Uh, one was almost as expensive as a current crypto command, <laughs> and was doing a better job at it. So the foils are were like thirty plus. Oh, all right, fair so. enough. Fair enough. Um, but I, I think it's fine for it to go. I, I still yeah, think no, absolutely. I still think like green. Is, green is a, green is in such a like a the, the, all the good cards have just gone to there. Like it, it seems like such an embarrassment of riches, right? And I think, like, if even when I've been for how long I've been playing, like, Green has had had it pretty rough for a long time, and then has gotten such a a like I said, just an embarrassment of cards. Yeah, I, and, I don't like, know when it's the last just, time it's so Green had a rough time. Um, like, when's the last time Green had a rough time? I I always feel like, um, I always feel like yeah, the the, the standard formats that I can remember have been. Um, Green's mainly just been they've just been very multicolor heavy f- standard formats. I mean, it, it, at least currently it has to be pre pre Shadows block. It was the last time Green was m- maybe underpowered. Oh yeah, probably. Maybe, like, I was not talking then, about way but back. even then, like you know, it has to be maybe pre Theros, right? Because you had Devotion being one of the Devotion. Yeah, Devotion was being good. Ubiquitous. Yeah. Um, one of us will look at uh, from the Invitational has like Whisper Elemental in it. And you're like, oh man, I forgot about that card. Right? That card's so pretty good. Pre Theros. Like, Green continues to get these cards. Like, 
um, like Corsair Crew Fix, like Eidolon of Blossoms we saw, like then we go up to like Tireless Tracker, or even now more recently with Jade Light Ranger. Like its creatures continue to be more and more efficient at what they do, but now we're starting to see those spell differences, yeah, which and is I think where that's, it's a problem. That's where you gotta like that's where you gotta scale it back, where it's just like, you know. But I think like Cause, I mean, even, like, like compare this to like blossoming defense, which saw ubiquitous play and still yeah. sees ubiquitous play. Like green should be able to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't know how much further beyond that effect you need to expand. I mean, heck, look at heroic intervention that offered, uh, you know, indestructible and hexproof, right? Which is very, very close to what you know this this card is doing. That was a two mana card, yeah, and a rare. Mm-hmm. So like, you're just looking at like an increase of efficiency for effects that I don't think deserved to be. Sure. Or may even made sense to do it at the sake of again being quote unquote narrow. Yeah. So So like if if like Wizards wants to design like obviously they like having cycles, they like having cycles of like the this is obviously good against the the enemies of green. Like wh- how do you design cards like that then? Do you I, I, like, I'm not you, sure. I, I'm because really like not. you're right with display dominance and uh veil uh, autumn's veil and stuff like that have just just not been good yeah, enough. Autumn's veil saw play, but yeah, it certainly wasn't good enough. Um I'm not sure. And they obviously aren't either, and that's important. Um, I do think, like, recognizing that it shouldn't cycle, right? Like, I I guess I get tired of the point where where the way that you make green better than, like, blue is you make it better what blue does. That's not how anything else works. You know, when you look at something like... um, And and again, there's a lot of issues with design at that point. But when you look at something like Fry, for example, right? Like, Fry gets to be hyper-efficient at what it does by adding more damage to a specific target. You know what I mean? Two mana, uncountable, five damage to a creature or a planeswalker is is good. You know what I mean? Or like Rending Volley before it. But it's because it gets to be really good at that one thing. And that's why, like, a Blossoming Defense better. You know what I mean? My creature got bigger. It has Hexproof. This is important. But when you're like, well, you should also get to counter a spell and draw a card. You're like, no, no, no. Those aren't green's things. You can't just give green the other color's things. Mm-hmm. And that's what they keep doing. Yeah. Um, I just wonder. Because, like, we're, 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 like, you know, green is the realm of creatures, right? Like, right. Your creatures should just be better. So are we looking at potentially more... More, more in the line of where we're, we're trying to take a look at what what if we were looking at like a Carnage Tyrant as creature that had a um, like a Bayloth a um, Bayloth esque effect like you could sack it to gain four life no, 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 no like if it was just if you were part of it you discard I, I guess it. maybe the you would have to argue right now that green needs it no, sure 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 that's, that's I, the problem like I, you would I, have I to argue it, to me that it needs it I and think, it does it I think I'm talking inside of a vacuum sure right? no no sure sure I, I, I think like some of those effects are not always as elegant as they want them to be but yeah. they're certainly fine um I, I don't know what the perfect answer is to mm-hmm. that. I don't know that we have to. And again, I don't know that obviously play design doesn't know because they, they mentioned sure. that it was a struggle between these sort of cards. But I think it is OK to look at a card and say you shouldn't be able to do you shouldn't be able to do yeah. better at what something else does. Narrow or not. Sure. You know I mean, that's that's just what it is. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they didn't look at Aether Gust, Right. And go, well, this actually just like kills the creature. Right. No, no, no. It didn't. It, it no. It's temporary removal because that's what blue does. Blue didn't get another color's part of the pie to no. do its effect. And even if it if it was like a destroy type of effect, it would have been a replacement. Yeah, right? it so been yeah, like a pongify. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's exactly. Like it's got a token or something like like the other colors have to play in their boundaries. But for some reason, green doesn't have to do that anymore. And, and it's frustrating because they can say because it's trying to push that forward, but then like. I don't know, like, what does white get then? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, white gets obscenely powerful planeswalkers because it's the only way to make the color relevant. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, I yeah, I know. <laughs> we got uh, uh, Elspeth and then Gideon. Yeah, that's good. Gideon again. Yeah. Hey, you can play Elspeth and Pioneer, man. I know. <laughs> Sleeping up some, some blue-white controls. Love you, boo. Um... Let's move on to the next card. Sure. So the next card is Once Upon a Time, another green staple <laughs> in multiple formats. Um, seeing a band of standard, and I think, like, again, this is just another powerful card. And if we go by the checklist of, like, what get things banned, right? Like, color pipe bleeds, get things banned. Too efficient, get things banned. Free mana, gets things banned. Yep. So, neat. Um, yeah, I mean... I was honestly surprised to not see this get banned in Pioneer this week as well. I, I, I think it's definitely coming because it's enabling. They were hoping that the ve- – they, they even said when they banned the Veil of Summer, like they were hoping that that would be enough 
to let other decks interact with the green decks. I don't think that's true. No, I, so I, they, I think I, that, I think they'll be looking at this next because I, this is this isn't it's here's what it's doing in standard is a is a mag, you know, is a magnifying lens on what it's doing in other formats. Mm-hmm. Um, in standard, it's showing you maybe this, how much of a mistake it is to have three mana planeswalkers and uh, or and one mana producing creatures that make any color of mana. Any color, yeah. Like Land of War Elves was okay because. It was hard to cast, you know, certain planes. Well, not yeah. granted, it would have been. It's good with Oko, let me tell you. Uh, but that's because part of Oko is green. Um, but when you have then this card that lets you f- almost always find your one mana creature, I mean, it honestly, it is impressive to see in the rivals how well. And we'll talk, you know, spoiler alert, I guess, but like how well some of the adventure decks are still doing because I think they're going to suffer without this card because Edgewall you know, Innkeeper is not going to be as easy to find. Yeah. So I think it highlights the the problem with this, but I also think like. As like just from a design perspective, when we're talking about what green is able to do, like again, it's free half the time. Which you see, I think in Pioneer and in Modern, it, you sh- it sees how gross that is because efficiency yeah. is killer in, in those formats. But more, but like more than that, like it gives green fixing, which green should have fixing. It should. But it gives green fixing in weird places, like one at instant speed. But also then you print it in a format where a bunch of your creatures are spells. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why does green get to do that? Again. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I mean, I don't. Like, no, no, I'm not upset with you. you no, know, no. I, I'm I, just, uh, I understand. You're upset in I'm just general. disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I completely, like, agree in that sentiment. And um, realistically, like, there's a lot of people that are saying, like, you know, this card combined with London Mulligan is really rough. Also true. This really kind of sends it over the top because it's like a, you, you know, you get to look in, like, consistently, like, look at so many cards and, like, keep absurd hands that you, like, shouldn't be able to keep, which just just reminds me of another card that is banned in a lot of places, which is, like, a Taxian Probe. And it feels, like, very, very similar to that card, which, by the way, blue card, so... Um, cool. <laughs> but they just said, what if we printed this blue card as a green card? Would they notice? <laughs> Will they figure it out? Um, this is called a Koki uh, mana. <laughs> so it's just it, it, it's just something that I don't feel it doesn't add anything positive to the format, in my opinion. I think like maybe we could have be having a different discussion if we didn't have London Mulligan. I don't know if that changes like the context of like the consistency portion because I think that's a lot of a lot of what is happening with Once Upon a Time is that a lot of games you're having feel the same. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I, I think if you took the free rider off of it, it helps it a lot, like making it more yeah. legitimate. Because, like, your opponents very consistently don't have to make decisions. Yeah. They don't have to make, like, or, like, and the same is true, like, when you're casting Once Upon a Time, if it's your first spell, you don't have to make those decisions. You know, what's a comparable effect to this that's legal, like, in Pioneer? I think Grizzly Salvage, so I think it comes to mind. Oh, so like, sure. Green and yeah. black, and you can get either a creature or a land, yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. and the rest go to your graveyard, right? Like, that's, and that deck, that card saw a ton of playing standards. It's hyper efficient at what it does. It even yeah. puts the cards in the graveyard. And, like, the difference is it's gold, so you have to have two colors of mana, so it's harder to cast, and you always have to spend mana to do it. So you actually have to find the right slot to put it in here. And I, so I think, like, it could have been fixed. And again, Grizzly Salvage wasn't legal in a format where your creatures were also your spells. And I think that's important. You know, this finds Murderous Rider. You know, yeah. Why does Once Upon a Time get to find Heroes, Heroes Downfall? Downfall? Like, why does it get to do that? So, I again, I, I think there's there's ways to fix that. But I think when you look at modern, though, too, it's the free part of it that's really yeah. I, I, I think like if this card wasn't free, it's not good. Oh, of course not. <laughs> uh, you look at like Amulet Titan, which is of course using this card. Like, yeah. think of how many things they get to do on on their best turn ones. Right? I don't want to. It's but frightening like, and disgusting, to be honest. I mean, you're not wrong. Like, yo, you, you get to set up your lands. You get to, pl- yo, if you have this and you have a um, um, amulet, you know what I mean? Like, you are setting up for turn two. You just are. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's it's a frustrating card, and I I, ex- I expect to see abandoned pioneer. I don't know about modern, but I expect to see abandoned pioneer. Yeah, in modern. There needs to be other things that need to be. Banned. I don't disagree. <laughs> This, and to be honest, we skipped modern in our uh, list. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll talk about modern. that a little bit after this. So, um, the last thing, of course, is Oko, Thief of Crowns, Band and Standard. Get the hell out of here. Goodbye. Oh, Mor- Morgan did the curse today. I, I mean, like, whatever. That's like a PG 13 curse. Morgan did a heckin'. 
<laughs> but no, like uh, clearly Oka was not not good in the format. And oh, no, they... Morgan, it was great in the format. Okay, too good in the format. <laughs> um, not good for the format. Good How night, about sweet that, Prince King? <laughs> King sure, yeah, crown. I mean, princes have crowns. Um, <laughs> crown for a king. <laughs> <laughs> but um no obviously like we we've had this discussion before like oko is just gross in in standard and you know it going with the combination of these two other cards going definitely depowers uh green by a significant margin um and i think is the, these these all cards are all feel like great bands like they they just do um i you know anyone that it's financially hurt by this, like that sucks. But you kind of knew the writing was on the wall with some of the percentages that were going out there, like just absurd numbers being put up by the these you know these decks that contained all of these cards. So it's like you you definitely with with magic and the financial aspect of it, you have to know like what's going on and be able to react accordingly if you want to. If you don't want to get burned by this sort of stuff, and not everyone cares, and you know these cards are still usable in other formats, of course. Um, oh, and and if you had Oko's, guess what? They got more expensive for some yeah, reason. That's amazing to me. But uh, so you, I mean, here's you the were thing. perfectly I, fine. I say that surprised, but Morgan and I both were talking before the cast about how we need some Oko's. Yeah, we do. So it's and we were both kind of waiting, and we messed up. Yeah, we, just, we should have pre-bought, not post-bought. Yeah, well, you Oops. know, hindsight is a three-three elk. Um, <laughs> So I, I want to make mention before, because I know we're going to move and talk about these tournaments. Um, there was an article that was released in conjunction with our ban list, uh, which was called uh, Things We Learned, right? Or yeah. Play Design Lessons Learned, um, which is a really interesting piece for a couple of reasons. One, they, they talk about this acronym FIRE, which is um, – hold on here. Uh, fun – magic should be fun, inviting, replayable, and exciting. That's FIRE. So that's their new lessons to live by, which if you – Pay attention with Oko. That's hilarious. But it, there is one, at least one interesting tidbit that we can come back to. So we'll put a pin in this one is that um, they are trying to push the power level of standard sets a little bit and that Throne of Eldraine is just a little higher than the, where they normally want it to be at. So remember, multiple for, like multiple bands, probably in multiple formats before this is done is just right. <laughs> Like, it's just above what's... It's a li- Goldilocks. It's a little too sweet. A little too sweet. But there is a piece in it talking about Planeswalkers that I want to talk about because it it made my eyes twitch a little bit. And here's the thing. I say this saying, like, one, we have, we have been very, like, heralded of play design. Like, I'm glad it exists. It's led to a lot of good things. And we know some fine folks on that team, and they're good people. So, like, I don't mean to, like, drag. But this is a two-paragraph quote I'm going to go through quickly. Three mana planeswalkers are riskier space than we were giving them credit for. Even when we've been, even when we were giving them a lot of credit, we've seen some that occupy fun and healthy roles. They give Domir Anarchobolus and Gideon uh, Blackblade as examples, which are two cards that have seen almost no play. Uh, but big old goose egg. We've also seen several uh, invalidating large swaths of cards. For example, it's Fairy Time Raveler invalidates most instants. Oh, and most creatures. Ogo Thief of Crowns invalidates most permanents. I, I put it in the Oak creatures. That's that's a Sorry. Yeah. Um, invalidates most permanents more expensive than himself. Will likely continue making three mana planeswalkers, but sparingly, carefully, and with the question if this planeswalker is strong, what could it push out of the environment at the forefront of the conversation? In particular, we were leaning too hard on planeswalkers' ability to be attacked and how much less reliable that counterplay is on three mana planeswalkers. The further we deviate from the basic four and five mana planeswalker loyalty schemes that we've explored many times now, the more careful we need to be about re-checking our assumptions about how they impact the game. Beyond that, as soon as we're able, we'll be introducing more and more varied cards to provide avenues for uh, planeswalker interaction outside of the combat step. Now, unless I'm crazy, when I read that, they didn't realize, and again, all the testing they do, didn't realize that there are less creatures on the battlefield by the turn that a three-mana planeswalker comes down, and therefore they can't pressure them more. In addition to that, the two biggest defenders, both Teferi Time Raveler and now Oko, came down and interacted favorably with the creatures that were designed to pressure those planeswalkers? How? How was it a thing? I, I, I'm I sorry. I need to know, actually. I need to know how this is a thing. You'll have uh, to ask them, man. Like, that... 
hurts my brain so much. And they talked about this, like this is lip service because they talked about it in War of the Spark that there was going to be more ways to interact with planeswalkers because there were going to be so many planeswalkers in the format. But here's the thing. There aren't that many good ways to interact with planeswalkers. Maybe in like like a limited sense <laughs> in like the war of spark limited but not for your standard that's, Even that's war effective spark limited, it wasn't that many but you had what spark harvest yeah you had a lot of like burn spells that could specifically yeah, this is target true. them this is true but like in standard playable cards you're looking at fry which they designed oko to ignore you're looking at murderous rider which literally in both cases because of the nature of teferi's turning off instance and the nature of oko like they both got you're getting some pretty fine value out of your three mana spell. So your tempo exchange and your resource exchange is just bad. I, it, it blows my mind. And then you combine that with, again, the veil of summer, um, you know, the removal is not very good. So then when you use a veil of summer to counter like a murderous rider on a planeswalker, like you're talking about a play pattern that ends the game on the spot. You can continue limping through that game for a few more turns, but there's a good chance you lost it right there yeah. because they're up a card. They still have their planeswalker and they did it for the low, low cost of a single mana on top of their three mana planeswalker. Yes, we can talk about Oko being like disgusting in conjunction with one mana, you know, one mana creatures like mana producers. Yes. It certainly is, and maybe Oko would have been better in standard if, if there wasn't Golden Goose. That's possible. It does not fix this problem. But the sheer fact that they didn't understand that on turn three, it's hard to attack, and then they set up a format with multiple creatures that cast that helped you cast Oko on turn two, you already knew you couldn't... You're like, what in the world? I get yeah. messing with the numbers on Oko. They talk about how much they wanted food to exist and how much they had to go back and forth on that. I get that. I get how you can miss those numbers. But how you fundamentally misunderstand how powerful three mana planeswalkers are? We already know that the most powerful planeswalkers in history are the ones, for the most part, that go down in cost. Yeah, Tybalt exists. Ha ha, funny joke. But, like, it's both Liliana's that are at three mana, mm-hmm. right? It's Jay's Friend's Prodigy. It's any of these. Even, like, the best of Johnny was three mana. I, it just it blows my mind. They built an entire set around three mana planeswalkers, I mean, and we, said they didn't learn the lesson that right. it's hard to attack them. <sighs> I don't, I don't get that. Well, Especially, don't worry, most of them don't tick up, so we never had to worry about it. It, may, it makes me legitimately angry because there isn't an excuse for that. No, it's not. And like they, they try to like. I think they try to make excuses for themselves in the article themselves. They say that like the 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 play the, the design play the design team isn't a playtesting team. It's a design team as well. So they have to look at it in that well, they aspect. Said, they said that they have to start looking at it in that aspect. Yeah, because all they were doing was playing games. But I just don't understand how you if that's all you're doing. How do you miss the the huge like the one thing I will give them? And they mentioned this, and maybe that's something they just have to think about. You know, the reason that we know some of the players on play design and, and people on play design, and when I say no, it's like I'm not like I'm not talking to them constantly. No. No, but, not at all. Um, or ever anymore. But <laughs> uh, they, you have a lot of competitive players, right? Which is good because you want them to view the game that way. But then if you're saying that you need to f- focus more on design and less on playtesting, like, does that mean you're treating playtesting like you would treat normal magic? Which is, even when we playtest magic, I have a hard time separating my desire to win from it. Yeah. Right? Like, is that competitiveness a, a jading factor? I don't know. It, that's and that's conjecture. That's pure conjecture. Yeah. But yeah reading yeah. into that article, it makes sense to me. You know, maybe they didn't see Oko as a problem because they were winning with the decks with Oko, which made it good. I guess. It, yes, but uh, I don't. I just don't understand. I know that's not super satisfying, but I think no. So I, I, again, I. I I I don't know. I, I'm not as upset in general about bands. Like I know some people really it really shakes their confidence. I think that like. It would, it would it would be worse if they just refused to ban things like ever. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, but it would be nice if these things stopped. And when I read that article and I hear that play design's like, no, we're cool with this power level, and we're like, oh, okay, like you already you banned two cards in like you're we're a month and a half away from set release. We're a month and a half from the beginning of October. Like. If this is where you want the power level to be, then yeah, you can't just it can't be a lip service. You've really got to put the work into this because you have two, three sets now. Because what core, the core set also has 
two cards banned from it. Yeah, Field, right? and, field and, and Veil. And then there's how many cards banned from Modern Horizons before that, which I don't know if Play Design did much on, on that or not. I don't know if they're only standard. I don't know. But, like, you've got, like, a, you know, under this new fire initiative, you've got a lot of bannings. Hey, a, lot of, a lot of fires you have to put out. Yeah, I guess that's fair. <laughs> I so and like out the fires of invention. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, coming soon to a bandless near you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think like I think you're right in in that particular instance. It's like they they do have to pay more attention if they want things to be powerful because you have to make sure that standard is playable. You can want to push cards so they get played in Pioneer and get played in Modern. But guess what? If your standard isn't viable, then no one is going to play Arena. And if Arena is the future, then like you got to make sure that your standard formats are always hitting a certain mark of quality. Yeah. Um, it's it's the Magic Online issue we were talking about before the cast. Yeah, you know, go take a look at the prices, especially some of these Planeswalkers in the last few sets. I was joking. Vivian Arcbow Ranger just hit sixty or seventy bucks or seventy tickets. Yeah. on Magic Online. Right. It's not just because of demand. Like it's in high demand. But it's because no one opened the set on that on Magic Online. No, they all played on Arena. You know, Teferi's clo- was close to a hundred ticket. You know, Little Teferi was again because of that. So like, they already see what can happen with this problem. Yeah. So I I don't know. I I, I think like I don't mind high powered standards. I, I think like when you look at some of the powerful standards we've had previously, they've been also some of the best standards that people have ever had. You know, you look at RTR and Estrad, very powerful standard, very fun standard. Um, I, you can even look at like cons and some of the cons decks in that standard, also a very fun standard. Um, so it's like having a very powerful standard format isn't the worst thing, but it, it just needs to, it needs to be vetted a little bit harder. <laughs> in those two formats, you know, you're talking about formats that had, answers built in you know obviously we have answers here but like it wasn't a planeswalker issue so much yeah you have what leon of the veil vale in the inner f- format that was good they had like the five man of garrick that was good five man oh sure yeah but like yeah that wasn't ubiquitous i'm trying to think of, like and like cons you had jason's prodigy you did have that yeah and you you, you had uh like nissa who was very good in that format as well the, nissa? The, the flip man of the, oh the, flip nissa vastwood yeah. ranger yeah. yeah but i'm trying to like you but you didn't have those as like your choke point with that so your answers that you printed were good enough you know what i mean yeah and like they were creatures and, and, for and a we're, small portion and we're of it a too. small standard and that's yeah. important to remember too but I, I just yeah i mean i think bigger standards are are better standards i think like you know that's that's a tough problem. That's a problem you can't really solve for um, necessarily um, without like modifying like how rotation works. Or, well, we've or done that a lot recently. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a you know great fanfare and success. I, I'm happy with the bands. I'm happy. They, oh, hundred percent. And I, I don't want to sound critical with that, but I do think like they keep saying they're learning from these bands. But like, there's an in memoriam list that uh, Channel Fireball has been keeping that's super funny for this year. It's also super long, like crazy long for one year in Magic. And I know we sort of talked about that. I think that Morgan's out, which you made the title of last week's episode, was it's been a yeah sort of a, some take on the it's what a long, strange journey it's been. <laughs> but like that doesn't bode well. Like we're going to learn lessons in 2020. I, I, you know what? I'd, I'd, I'd rather like we, you know, you already said like I'd rather them make make bands than not make bands. And like, if you're going to push the, the power level, like then I expect it. Like I, I just want to have my expectations set. And I think that the people who listen to our podcast should have expectations set that this is going to happen again. Like they are, they're, they're, they do well, not have a track record of getting things right. And there's also cards still in standard that are out of obscene power levels. So like, correct. Like little fairy, you're there. Nissa's still there. Hydra Crease is still there. So you got to be careful. So yeah, I did think I found the Macroy's uh, year though. Yeah. With 20 plenty lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's something that I think when I think I think they might be feeling heat from somewhere. I think that there's somewhere that is that they are trying to do things to drive the game and and push profits to some degree. So they have to push the the, the actual power level of these cards to get to keep people interested. And I think like that, though you can see the wheels coming off a little bit. Um, is it? Is it global warming? Is that where they're yeah, feeling the heat? I, I think so. They're feeling the fire because of their own in, internal boiling. Um, but I think like th- there has to be something that's going on. Like I don't know if it is a 
like a, a a desire to not retread old ideas and things that maybe they they they, they just want to stay away from from doing that and trying to push things into unsafe boundaries because they feel like they have to um and that's what's causing like these changes because we i mean i feel like I feel like we've had boring standards and good standards, um, but most recently, I just feel like we've had a lot of bad standards where they're they're actively like not not good and need things to be banned to be enjoyable. And I don't feel like that has been the case, you know, five years previous. You know, yeah, that's probably fair. So I don't know. It just feels like there's something that's. That is, that is changed internally with maybe, maybe not just this fire sort of you know doctrine they they have, but but something else, something external that's that's pushing on them. And um, I don't know, I don't know what it is. But again, if they want this power level, then there's probably I, I will have to wait and see if they can actually maintain it. And if they can't, then I do expect more bans. Like just that's that's how it's going to be. Um, and at least you know if you know that going in, then maybe. Maybe you play arena more because at least at the very least, guess what? When your cards get banned in arena, at least you get them back. I guess you could just still sell your cards that you that get banned, but not all of them are going to be oh necessarily okos that are, are going to be more profitable or even like you know once upon a time or something like that that can still be moved at a pretty reasonable uh, pace. And maybe that's why things like Pioneer exist to to you know to float you when these bans happen because if these cards are going to be super powerful. In standard, there is a more likely chance they're going to be more powerful in pioneer as well. True, and like you know, that doesn't always that that one to one translation doesn't always happen to modern. You know, sometimes cards hit real hard standard and completely miss in modern. So when it does get that ban, it uh, bottom falls out of the price. So like you know, maybe the cynical version of looking at it is pioneer helps float those two powerful standard cards. Maybe that's their directive, right? We make this card obviously too powerful for standard. I ban it two weeks or whatever after the set, <laughs> you know, and then it's fine for Pioneer. And like, this is how we do it. This is this is how we we get cards. This into- is how <laughs> we do it the most inelegant way possible. I just await Pioneer Horizon Masters. <laughs> I mean, like Modern Horizon. That's Horizons. probably not the best portmanteau for Horizon Masters. But. Horizon was so like Hor- Masters. Uh, Modern Horizons is so like elegant. Like they introduce a bunch of cards and still have to ban them. <laughs> Introducing in the actual set. format. Pioneer Plateaus. <laughs> um, I it, it's it's interesting, and I think like there are a lot of people that read that article that got released and were pretty disheartened by what they read. So sure. So, sure. if you are in that boat, like like Mike is, like I am, you're not alone. It's a big boat, <laughs> big boat, big full boat. full a lot of people, <laughs> full, full a lot of locos. <laughs> Um, so that's all we're going to talk about for um, uh, for community. Uh, before we uh, head over to talk about the Invitational, I do want to give a quick shout out, of course, to Comic Town. You can check them out at worldofcomictown dot com. Again, um, nothing coming up due to you know the upcoming holidays here in the states, but um, you can always check out. Some of the sales and deals they're going to be have go- they're going to have going on, um, and uh, if you're local, come check them out for your, all of your uh, uh, you know holiday shopping. All right, let's talk about this invitational, the standard free invitational, which is fantastic. I think um, uh, you know this is kind of Pioneer's first big showing as well in paper. You know we've seen a lot of Magic Online data, and I don't know how much weight you know people put on queuing for the players tour but uh, for a huge cash purse people put a, a lot of uh, weight <laughs> behind that so this is where we were hoping to, to kind of see what the cream of the crop was or at the very least the way you know what the you know best players in the star city game circuit were really bringing to the table um and i feel like while while we're doing this this uh uh, uh podcast uh, currently star city games website is down um, so we we have the top eight lists, which I know aren't necessarily top the 16. top sixteen lists, which I know aren't necessarily the, the you know not necessarily the most winning lists, but we can kind of derive that these are at least well performing decks um, to have you know to show up in these the the top sixteen at the very least. So um, where do you want to start? Do you want to start off talking about? Let's move through modern quickly. Modern quickly. So, um, of course, the winner um, we will uh, announce is Chris Barone. Or Baroni, I, I think. I, I think it's Barone, but... Um, Barone, Baroni. Barone. Um, 
<laughs> but um, he was playing humans, which is a kind of a, a rogue choice, to be perfectly honest. Um, defeating no, uh, it's humans. I mean, do they have any rogues in humans? But I don't think it, so. You're not naming rogue on Cavern of Souls. Come on, man. Those are world of rogues. Uh, oh. No, we're no world of rogues in this <laughs> one. Unfortunately, he didn't even have like the uh, the the um, changeling one, so I can't even be like, ah, oh, yes, he was playing a rogue. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I don't think he was playing any uh, any rogues. Kaiser Freebooter is a pirate. It's a, pirate, yeah. Yeah, it's a rogue. It's a roguish character. Uh, you know, it's a stretch, but I'll take it. Anyways, um, but you know, this is not too far off from what yeah, you know you would think a traditional sort of humans list would be playing. Um, um, nothing really like new or sort of groundbreaking to talk about. This is just kind of humans, and I really feel like he probably had a pretty lucky tournament with with humans to you know be able to show up in the in the top eight and actually win. Well, I mean, I do think looking at all like the Death Shadow lists that are you know that are doing well, and yeah, like, tuning themselves to beating some of the combo decks. I think like humans is definitely a deck that could just like slip underneath and be like, oops, here we are. So, mm. like even looking at, like the third place, um, the third place Grixis Death Shadow list was just Dan Salvatore. Um, you're looking at the sideboard, it has a single copy of Plague Engineer, mm-hmm. but no Wrath, you know, no, like, um, Anger or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I guess I guess Engineer Explosives is there. So you have two pieces to really right. go. Obviously, you have a lot of removal in those decks. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it's important. And even looking at something like they're playing, like, Maydeck Royal, Sci- uh, Royal Scions, right? Like, like, it's not the card I'm necessarily looking for in that Humans matchup, so. No, no, not really impacting the board typically with, with that one. So, and you're right, the reemergence of uh, sort of Grixis Death Shadow, Definitely gives humans a deck to prey on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like you can again, you can have draws where you can beat it and you have enough removal, but like, like it's it's got a pretty good you know just a like game plan against yes you know, what everything is doing. So um, we have the second place list. It was Adam Franzi uh, playing uh, Mono Green Tron, which is not surprising. This is a um, he was playing uh, some. He played two Thrag Dusk in the main, which is kind of interesting. I think like. If you are, you know, noticing, like, trends, like, Burn is still a very popular deck um, on Magic Online. Um, still one of the top, like, percentages across, like, all the data they collect over at uh, MTG Goldfish. So it's like, eh, like, th- if you're trying to metagame against that, then I don't see why not. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I don't see anything. You know, they, I think, like, the the great creator lists are pretty much the default lists at this point yeah, in time. Certainly. I don't think anyone's trying to, to fight against that current anymore, uh, like some people were, so... Like a pro tour winner was. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think like people have just like gone away from that. And then, um, and recall the promise end replacing one of the Ulamogs as well as sure. uh, showing up as a, your other top end threat. Um, we have Sam Burke bio playing amulet Titan. Uh, and this is a, a list obviously that takes advantage of once upon a time, as well as, um, castle Garenbrig from throne of Eldraine. So a couple new cards getting added to the, uh, the, the deck. Um, but uh, yeah, being able to play turn three Titan um, is good, and uh, this deck does it a fair amount of time. Yeah, uh, we have Eldrazi Tron, uh, played by Kevin Hoang. Uh, I like uh, the uh, Ugin the Ineffables in Eldrazi Tron. Like, I think it's the first time I've seen its um, static ability, static be, ability relevant. be relevant. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, like that's. But that's, you can like play an Ugin and then play like a Chalice on one on the same turn. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Or like a, a like a walking blister, or a, a walker, or something like that. Yeah. Or like, oh, maybe just a hold up warping whale. <sighs> free warping whale. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, like Eldrazi Tron, you know, definitely is a Chalice of the Void deck. I feel like you know your your make or break. That's your make or break card. If you you have that, then you kind of feel unstoppable. But sometimes your your draws are without it are a bit anemic. But a lot of Mulligan helps that too. So uh, very true. Um, of Urza. Yeah, we have Simicurza. With those lovely Okos. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Okos, and of course, this is a, a, a Karn deck. You know, they, they aren't really playing the, the Wars anymore. This isn't, you know, what the, the deck's about pretty much at, at this point in time. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, this was sort of the the, the deck to expect, the deck to, that you might have had to uh, to beat uh, this, this weekend. And um, Man, four of the top eight decks are playing the karn Micros atlantis combo. Yeah, you know, we we know the card's good. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And um I'm I'm not excited about it. I'm not excited about like a a combo that just kind of like shuts you out of the game. It's not great. It's not fun, but uh it, it's 
interactable? Do I want to say that? You can interact with the Planeswalker? Question mark? Yeah, you can attack it. I read that Lessons <laughs> Learned article. <laughs> and so far, that's that seems to be the, the best way that I've seen people interact with that most of the time. Um, and then we have uh, No Walker playing Grixis Death Shadow in 7th. And then we have Crabvine in 8th place, Pied um I know, would you say this name is Dylan? D-Y-L-A-N? Yes. Okay, well, they were saying Dylan on the when they were when they were casting his top eight match. So what were they saying? They were saying Dylan. They weren't Dylan. saying Dylan. That wasn't making like a Dylan. They weren't making a like. Um, I don't know if they're making a reference, like a Chappelle show joke. I don't know. I the, don't know. The top five. That's why they were ra- saying this person's name. Top five hottest rappers in the game right now: Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, 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 and Dylan. Uh, it could just be how he says his name. I don't know. I don't. I you know, I was calling Hucklebone. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Huckabone um, was was playing uh, Crabvine. So this is just sort of the the newest the sort a, of the pseudo- attack attack theme deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> to wow, reference a <laughs> a band that was popular when I was just out of high school. Uh, my brother was rolling a crab core. <laughs> that is not surprising. Um, I think uh, well, Ohio's own attack attack. Thank yeah, you're you not very, wrong. Thank you very much. Um, but um, so we're, we're seeing the Hedron Crabs, um, the Glimpsey Unthinkables. Once upon a time, also showing up as a as a, a <laughs> oh, stealthy one of. Fun fact: It can get Merfolk Secret Keeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, obviously, modern all star because that's the play. <laughs> oh man, um, but this is sort of the what what's left of the the. You know, Hogak Vine decks. <laughs> what what they've become, as it were. Still powerful. De- definitely. And just not a lot of graveyard hate, so. But, I mean, you know, very, very fall. It's quite quite a fall from, from, what yeah, they want, from know, where they once were. It's, it is what it is. Um, finishing out the top six, we have um, Kellen Pistor with Adrazi Tron. Um, Edgar Magaish with Simic Urza. Jacob Seagal with Infect. Um, and I bet... This is another Once Upon a Time list uh, that we're looking at. Oh, yeah. Definitely a Once Upon a Time list. and Because uh, like, you, know, you want to be able to find your next infect creature every single time. Yeah. So it's exactly what the deck is looking for. Um, I like you know, this deck is a definitely another Oko deck as well to the sideboard. But I think like Oko is an interesting piece of sideboard tech for infect because mm-hmm. um, there's obviously a lot of strategies where like the food is just good. But also like it just presents a win condition by itself. Yeah. Like, if, if you're playing against, like, a Jundish or, like, heavy creature removal, like De- Grixis Death Shadow, like, all of a sudden you just have a steady chunk of threats to throw at the opponent. For sure. So, and your pump spells eventually will get there. Yeah. Um, but there are plenty, plenty of Infect players that have won th- with regular damage. They aren't above it. <laughs> Noble Hierarch does attack. <laughs> uh, we have Burn, piloted by Chase Masters. Uh, a three Grixis Death Shadow list. Do you think that sets any good? What? Chase Masters. Um, I would have to imagine because it probably is full of chase rares, right? It's, it's all chase cards. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a great set. That'd be that'd be reprint masters right there. Um, uh, so again, uh, three Grixis Sh- Death Shadow, piloted by Rich Cali, Steve Mann, and Nathaniel Black, and then finally in 16th place we have Devoted Devastation, piloted by R- uh, Raja uh, Suleiman. So yeah, that that's kind of what. Uh, Which is it, another once upon a time Oko deck. But hey, oh, yeah, hundred percent. I, I think like things are a little bit more diverse in the top sixteen than I thought they were going to be. Uh, I really felt like the, we were just going to be talking a lot of, about Simic Urza, um, but there definitely are some other decks that are showing up. I think like when you look at it though, there's nothing surprising necessarily. I mean, and even necessarily the top sixteen is. Six or, or seven Karn the Great Creator decks and four yeah. Grixis Death Shadow decks. So, right. I, I don't know. Modern is, is, I don't think, is in a good place. And I I don't know why. I You have a perfect time right now where people aren't even going to be that upset. You're already making a bunch of bands. And secondly, they're focused on Pioneer. Fix the format. Yeah. So when people go, when people get tired of a little bit of Pioneer and they want to come back to Modern. Modern's there. Just like, it's still me. It's still, I'm not, still. Not this like weird, like, no, no, you're not modern. You're not my real modern. <sighs> just get rid of Mox Opal. Just, just do it. Just do it already. Yeah, just Shiloh Buffett. Do yeah. it. Do it. All right, Pioneer. All right. Uh, so uh, winning. Now this is actually Top Eight. Top Eight will play it out in Pioneer. So 
Um, the first place list was Mono Black Aggro defeating Mono Green Devotion. Um, we have a third place Mono Green Devotion list, and then a fourth place Gruel Aggro list. So let's talk about Mono Black Aggro real quick. Yeah, Mono Black Aggro was a deck that was like, I want to say at least three copies were in the seven or one or better list. Now I'm, I'm pulling that from my memory because again, yeah. Star City is down, but so did this, well. the, the, yeah, then this was a list that it, it, it won a, um, a PTQ mm-hmm. on Magic Online recently as well, and um, also showed up a bunch in the challenge. I think when the the, oh, the same time the invitation was happening, so uh, it was kind of like the the it deck of of the weekend um, in multiple different avenues. And to be honest, like it just it's just a powerful deck. It is well, an aggressive deck. It grinds. Look at all the crazy powerful cards it gets to play. It gets to play four mutable, four smugglers, copters, four thoughtsies, four fatal push. Yeah, it gets to play like the 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 two best like one mana cards in the in the format, um, amongst some other bad one mana cards. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean Nightmark and Lookout's a four of here. You're not wrong. <laughs> so, um, but um, and you get to play probably one of the best threats in the format in smugglers copter. Um, and I, you know, this deck, it is, it is very powerful and it is an aggressive deck that has, that can, that can grind, which is like, I think what makes it very, very powerful. I think your traditional ways of, um, attacking it, you know, your removal spells are going to look pretty bad if they're just like, they're not really like exiling a creature or something like that. So do you think like this deck is... Again, I, 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 it's tough for me to, like... I know that we've had, you know, standards in the past where, like, the aggressive deck is the best deck and, like, nothing can really, like, dispute that. Like, we've had modern red decks that felt pretty, like, oppressive and obviously have received bans because of it. Um, do you feel like, when you look at this deck, is there is there good counterplay that can exist within the format? Yeah, so, like, it's important that, like, the individual creatures are really, really bad. Uh, and the removal here, you actually have Fatal Push, but, like, the removal here is not so ubiquitous that you can't just, like, it, it certainly have draws where you might just, you can't present a blocker, but, like, if you're playing some of the better creatures in this format, then you you'll, you can be okay. Additionally, this deck does, it has a huge weakness against um, saw, or a sweeping removal, so um, any of your three-mana spot re- or sweeper removal that's in the format. Yeah, especially, like... Um, we, we don't have Pyroclasm, right? That's not in Pioneer? I, no, 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 no Pyroclasm, but you do have Anger of the Gods, which is really good, because the Exile... Anger, you have all of the three-mana black v- variants. Yeah, there's two of them that Exile. There's Flaying Tendrils Flaying and, tendrils um, and uh, uh, Howl, or not Howl, but uh, Cry of the Carnarium. Cry of the Carnarium. Uh, and then, yeah, so it, it, and even with non-exiling, which, you know, you know, obviously there's cards here that come back, but even non-exiling, you still have a pl- you have plenty of options as well. So, mm. no, I think this deck can be stopped. I, I will say this is probably the poster child for Smuggler's Copter eventually getting banned. Yeah, which is something. I mean, we saw what it did in Standard. It's still very, very powerful. It is, and if you can make Night Market Lookout playable, then oh, <laughs> that is that is definitely something that I, I think like. It feels like people do need to adjust on how this aggro deck functions. I think a mark against it is that it just may be too... Um, I don't know if other aggro decks are worth playing. I don't know if this like moves other aggressive decks out of the format necessarily. Well, so like, l- let's take a look at another aggressive deck to give you a, c- a counterpoint here. So if you look at that fourth place list you mentioned, the Gruel aggro deck, right? Yeah. So like this is a deck that if you look at it is pre- is presenting... A ton of one drops as well in mana creatures, right? Um, it also gets to play four wild slash to interact with those creatures across the board, and then it quickly scales up. You know what I mean? So, like, I think this is the kind of deck that can like look at the mono black deck and go, <laughs> "Just wait." Have right? you have you ever have you ever attacked with a goblin rabble master and then like flashed it in an ember cleave? Because <laughs> you have all those go- and they make it cheap. Oh, I have the vapors. <laughs> This deck is awesome, and I love this deck. Yeah, for sure. But I think this is the kind of deck that, like, when you're talking about competing aggro decks, you know, this this is a deck that can, like, it can present, like, a 5-5 five, five as its blocker, mm. and has the wild slashes and the one-mana creatures to get you into the game fast enough to play against it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you play a mana dork, and, and their turn one is, like, fatal pushing your mana dork or whatever, then, you know, certainly they have the draw where it's a one-mana creature and the one-mana creature and fatal push, but, like, you know, they have to have that draw or else, like, you are in, like, okay, here's a 5-5. Five, five. You know what I mean? Here's mm-hmm. here's this. Here's this. You start presenting those robust threats, and like, um, even things like Questing Beasts are super tough for that deck to deal with. They they can't blo- really block it effectively. Um, you know, to if they want to block it to try and like beat it, they have to actively sit back with what Knight of the 
Evan, Evan Hand yeah, Evan or Legion, Legion yeah. and like pump it. Like those are so yes, I think you can beat it, but I do think like both of these decks also happen to be playing four copies of Small Risk Copter, so it, and like they are aggressive decks, so that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, Small Risk Copter holding a uh, Ember Cleave is uh, also terrifying. Yeah, it's great. Because like sometimes you when you're playing that smuggler's copter Fine game, you both try to set up that turn where it's like okay, I'm going to trade off my smuggler's copter for your smuggler's copter, and sometimes smuggler's copter has a sword, <laughs> and that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like you don't even have hands. <laughs> I mean, te- technically, it's like a helicopter, right? So it has like four blades. It, it does just... not have a hand to hold Embercleave. <laughs> it, just... It, it just has. Oh, it opens up a new propeller slot. This is some sort of Gundam crap. Like <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> A hundred percent. It's like some really like happy slash sappy anime song plays in the background. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm I'm in for it. Please. Um, so we have these two mono green devotion lists here in, in second and third place as well, and and these are, you know, we, we've always had this this deck kind of exist since format's iteration, and it, it's just sort of the where the the setup is right now for it. Um, I wouldn't expect anything too different between these lists. I don't know if there actually is or, or isn't. But, um, like, the, I think uh, Dan Salvatore's list has, like, a Questing Beast, which is a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure if the other list has main deck scavenging uses. It does. Uh, it does, okay. So it's like, it, they cut, like, one scavenging use and put in, like, a Questing Beast, which I think makes sense. Like, Questing Beast is obviously pretty good against the field decks that did exist in this tournament, and what we'll talk about um but um but yeah i mean like this is one of the reasons why vivian narcbow ranger is a you know closing in on a 20 dollar card um and uh I don't, I don't know like these lists are definitely powerful like we we knew that mono green devotion is, is a powerful you know uh, archetype we knew that back in standard it makes sense that it's still powerful here especially with cards like voracious hydra being in the format and like being a very very powerful like green card um, but still, I still think within, you know, green's color pie, it's a creature that fights other creatures or gets big. Like, okay, that's, that's a green creature it, to it's me. It's rate is pretty good. Yeah. A hundred percent. Don't get me wrong. But again, like it's a creature. It's still based in green. So green creatures should have a higher rate. I guess. Is it, is it too high? At five mana, it's a six, seven with a trample. Uh, yeah. It's pretty good. It still dies to fatal push though. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, I I think the my only issue like if they don't do anything with devotion, that's fine. Like as far as like Nykthos and things like that, but I do think that like Nykthos builds by their very nature, like are you know builds that are trying to spike off of Nykthos. Like their best draws have a Nykthos, and like the yeah. deck does wildly different things on draws where it has a Nykthos versus draws where it does not. Yeah, and I think those are the kind of decks that like I don't know they don't I don't like them very much. You know what I mean? Because because like. The game plan is like, yes, these cards are good together, but like they're only really good together when you have this card to make it worthwhile. Yeah. So um, the spike and how and like and that tells that that gives me some pause as to like how like it's like maybe Nikthos is too good when it takes the deck like an average draw on the deck and turns it into a ten. Like I don't know how you know, but that that's only my thoughts on that. And, and I'm not asking for it to be banned. I just and, and no, and, and like I, I think like this is another candidate to to point out, be like maybe we don't need Once Upon a Time in the format. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that shouldn't be as consistent, right? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna go and assume that the fifth place hardened skills list is playing four once upon a time. That's oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. This is playing Arco Ranger too. This also yes. why Nissa voices and a car. Uh, yes. So, um, but the list that uh, there was a, a team that that all played hardened skills and their list was playing four. Um, Vivian Arcbow Rangers as well. I mean, that card's pretty good when you start at you know adding together both hardened skills and winding constrictors. Yes, like and you can target two creatures at once with it, and it's so. Yeah, I think these decks are very very good and like are good synergistic decks um, that are you know you can interact with these decks just fine, but they are they're powerful. Stone Coil Serpent with ex- extra counters gets real tough real yeah. quick. Do you know how many times I've attacked into Stone Coil, Stone Coil Serpent with a Smuggler's Copter on Moto? Oh, probably too many. Three times. <laughs> every every time, I, the first time I was like, oh, that was dumb. The next two times, it was because I was definitely like watching, like I was watching Simpsons on D- Disney Plus, and I was like, oh, yeah, again, this has reach. You know this. You know it. You can read the card. Nope. So I, do I blame anyone else other than myself? Absolutely not. I willingly traded off my, I needed to draw that card. It made the difference. Yes. Though technically one game it did because then I drew Dust on, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> we did it. So, but, uh. Hey, PSA, 
Soul Call Serpent has reach. <laughs> has reach. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I really like the Hardened Scales decks. Yeah. Um, I'm really drawn to Black Green. Um, just yeah, for you the sh- liked yourself some Winding Constrictors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And like uh, giving me a, 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 the color combination that has access to like Abrupt Decay is really tempting as well. Well, if you like Abrupt Decay, then you're going to love... Golgari Delirium. Yeah, this is piloted by uh, Stephen Dickman, and um, you know people have been trying to make like the these lists work to some degree, um, and you know we we kind of see like the the things that are pushing you know. Yeah, Stephen. this this looks very. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you. No, off. you're I'm good. Sorry. This looks so much like a testing list. Like, oops, I accidentally top aided because I ones in like outside of Grimflare, everything's a one or a two of. But you know, Grimflare and, Fl- and Thoughtseize, my bad. Everything's a one or a two of. Yeah, I, I think that's weird. I think like. Uh, the the one of creatures would make sense if you were playing like four of traverse. But we're only two traverse. missing two, and it's just like I'm not sure. Like well, I, I'm not sure. This this does definitely feel like a list where maybe not all the numbers. Obviously, yeah, we, are, we threw are a lot of in. things against the wall. Yeah, I do think like delirium. Like for some of the stuff that delirium didn't get to encounter, like the fact that you get to play delirium as a mechanic in a format that also has enchantment creatures. That's obscene. Like, oh, yeah. you killed my Courser, and I have Delirium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I think, like, I, one, I'm surprised to not see a- Emrakul anywhere in this list. Uh, yeah, that definitely feels like a, a sort of a missing component. And um, two, keep playing Ishkanaz. I bought a play set of them because they were real <laughs> cheap. Keep playing Ishkanaz. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ishkanaz is one of those cards that's just like, I just need one, maybe two. I don't know. You played a playset back in the you know back in standard. Back in standard, but I think like with your ability to turn on traverse, yeah, a little but bit Ishkanaz more. Can just kill your opponent. I think I would take this list, and the first thing I would do is try to figure out how we're playing all four traverses. I, I would agree. Figure out how to play all four traverses, and then figure out how to play like an emerald. Yes, because I think like you want that as if you're gonna if you're gonna play that you can want that one target. So I do think like a card that I just was surprised at how good it's been and is continues to be is Vraska Gagari Queen. Um, you know, if Abrupt Decay is good, good then, then yeah. Vraska is good, and Vraska is one of those like clean answers to a lot of the Planeswalker problems that you also just like still have value. So like whereas when you feel bad using a removal spell on like Oko because they already have food, well this like gives you that that symmetry where it's like yeah. I did kill Oko and I still have a Planeswalker. So. Yeah, a lot of good stuff here. Grizzly Salvage, like Grizzly Salvage, is another card to me. Like as a two up here, that just seems like this deck is screaming to play. Yeah, like all the Grizzly oh, Salvages. Oh man, yeah, so, definitely. So I'll be interested to see if, if there 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 are definitely numbers that, that yeah. can be adjusted. And, I, and I'll be interested to see if he if he goes forward and like uh, changes some of those. I do like yeah. some of his sideboard cards, like um, this of Vital Force. If you're looking at like we we've said this before when we were playing it in Modern, we were playing it in Bantel Drazi. Like it is such a good mid range mirror breaker. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just powerful. Uh, and, like, Leon of Dust Majesty is also really powerful, too, but it's also really good in a deck that's playing, like, Grizzly Salvage. Yeah. So, because, um, like, and that's, where, again, where I'd want to have, you know, things like an Emrakul, because, man, it feels pretty nice to minus three and bring an Emrakul back. So. Um, but, yeah, like, and, and, like, man, being able to, like, have your Traverse package and have, be able to play, like, Murderous Rider and just be able to, like, f- f- like search up your, your Hero's Downfall, like, whew. There, there, there are good things going on here. I think, like, I think we we have to look at like Grim Flayer. I think Grim Flayer is definitely just like a card that's just not quite good enough. I don't know if that's true or not. I, but I, I think like when when like you're running around a format that has a bunch of shocks and fatal pushes, like I, I don't disagree. With I'm that. not saying we need to cut it all from the deck. Maybe we cut down to two. <laughs> Maybe I I think like for me I'm more interested in what that the three mana glut is because like we can't decide between Corsair, Murderous Rider, Tireless Tracker, or Liliana of the Last Hope, and like I, out of those do, creatures I don't think two two and two is the right way. Sure, I was like I, I, I think you're probably either playing Corsair or Tireless Tracker in this deck. Yeah, I, or I, like one of the, like Tireless Tracker's maybe in the board because because of the shocks and things like that. Yeah. Um, that could be it. Because this look, definitely looks like a deck that I want Courser in, both because it, it is two types in the graveyard, but because it gets you, you know, it, it gets you to that late game. Because tra- you know, if you're going to play Traverse in general, you're playing a slow game. So I want to have Courser. Yeah. So I, I think like this is a, the, definitely a, a. I think a, Noxious Gear Hulk isn't good enough. Yeah, that, that could be it. I, I mean, like I'd just rather have like probably more murderous writers more murderous writers I sort of just like I, like that's my maybe like one of Emrakul's slot I'm not sure yeah um, it's just you, you're spending seven mana to get it you don't, you're not playing any main deck you know like 
uh, resurrection spells. You know, you like uh, you said, like having that little yeah, on the side or just board. like if you're gonna play the, the the noxious gear Hulk, then like why don't you even look at just like a ravenous chupacabra? At least it's cheaper, right? And and again, maybe it's because it's two types in the graveyard. So yeah, yeah, maybe. Yourself. But again, we're not really we're not really fully committed to any of these packages. That's true. So I think that's yeah, you know, where to go. But I like the idea of it, and like obviously, yo, know, we don't know what his record was. I know he wasn't one of the seven one lists. No, but like I think it's kind of interesting. He could just take a concept and do well with it. So. Sure. It's pretty interesting. But I think like a lot of people are going to be working on – like have sure, been – are actively working on these Golgari yeah, Delirium lists. Yeah, play four Ishkanahs. <laughs> so many Ishkanahs. <laughs> All the spiders you can ever want. I'm aware that like, Ishkanah is in no way going to be the price choke point in that deck that has Liliana the Last Hope and Definitely everything not. else. But if you wouldn't mind – Please. I, I come to you hat in hand. <laughs> um. Uh, next up, we have No Walker playing. Is it Insul? And this is a you know another. It is. It is. Yeah, <laughs> another popular sort of archetype that ex- has existed previously and has been ported over to Pioneer. And this is what friend of the show and former cast member uh, Dave uh, Nolan played, correct? Yes, I believe so. So, um, but you know, people Dave did not top eight. <laughs> he did not, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but again, like you know, we this is where we see our our, our world of rogue uh, show up, as well as a bunch of other um, just. Just real bad artifacts, but I get better when you put a soul in them for some reason. It's so, <laughs> so terrifying. I mean, it is what it is, man. I know, but like, I mean, I get why Ginger Brood didn't have a soul yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and again, we. To all people who are gingers, I'm sorry, that's an old joke. I don't mean any <laughs> hatred with that. Uh, but this is another Stone Coil Serpent deck. Yeah, Stone Coil Serpent also carries an insult real well. Real well, yeah. Those, those things stack, so yeah, it's pretty good. It's like, oh, you have a bunch of counters and a 5-5. Um, five, five. Neat. But, I mean, like, this is a fun deck because, like, Shrapnel Blast is just, like, a heck of a magic card. Yeah, it is. Um, and being able to have such amazing reach in, in sort of this very aggressive sort of deck is is pretty impressive. Um, and I know that people have been trying to, like, make this a Jeskai deck and, and play all that glitters as well. Uh, which is cranial plating, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> cranial plating, better, but better because it also counts your. Yeah, it also just like doesn't get to a quicker than something else. But no, I get what you're it saying. It does. It is better in the fact that it counts your our enchantments as well. This is true. Um, but I think like this is another like fun strategy that exists that is at a relatively okay price point as well. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean like. Yeah, most of the pain here is in the is in the mana base. So if Definitely. you've got most of that, like I can't believe Smolixopter is almost back up to ten bucks again. I'm glad I never got rid of mine. Yeah, even after they were banned, I put them away. <laughs> I did some of that. I was like, I sealed I them away for ten thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm free. <laughs> Time to conquer Pioneer. <laughs> Uh, and then we want to talk about Bant Ramp because I think this is the only field deck that makes the top sixteen. But these were sort of the talk of the tournament. Yeah, I know that uh, on a Burchette they played a Golgari. I liked their build. So I, did I. The black green build was nice. I, I think like I want the first thing I would want to do with that deck is play it and see if it played well. Um, but I would definitely want to look at like what we could do to add more lands so that are that are, <laughs> that, are in, that are named differently and see how how easier we can na- potentially enable field without like destroying our mana base but, but there were some there were some cool lands that, that their build got to play though that some of the other decks play Westfell Abbey Westfell Abbey was great the, the Black Castle Castle Lockthwain yes was so good in in, in, in their build and, and just I, I, I was excited to see some of this I'm not super excited to see Field of the Dead be a big player because uh, no d- definitely not the, the Pioneer still is in a format that has tons of good answers to land but I guess at least you have Field of Ruin so there's that um but like their the the match between um, Huckabone and, um, and Autumn and Autumn was was very fun. It was like real. It, it was cool to see what, and uh, it definitely cemented that I think Out of Promise is going to be a pillar of this format. Uh, and I definitely forgot. Like I, I mentioned it. I think I sent a screenshot of when I'm on when I was playing on Magic Online like two or three weeks ago, where I was like, where someone was playing like a, a banned version of this and like cast that with Field. And I was like, oh yeah. So I said that in our Discord. I was like. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing you can do. So I yeah. mean, I, I, I've been like looking at like Sultai lists that have been like field decks that 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 like like our promises are top end. Um, but yeah, like uh, I definitely agree. Like this list is you know um, we have Arboreal Grazers, Elvish Rejuvenators. Um, you know we have uh, Teferi and like Ugin as some of our Planeswalkers as well as some Okos. <coughs> 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to call for the mic. My apologies, oh, everybody. Uh, but this is like our, you know, this is a Sphinx's Revelation deck. Yeah, that's um, true. This is a field deck. This is this is kind of doing everything you want to do in like, I don't know, in, in, a, in a ramp deck um, in, in a lot of different ways. And, you know, we obviously we don't have a, a ton of like things that we're really doing as far as like, you know, ramp is concerned. Um, but something that's I mean, really... your, all your creatures do it. Your uh, yeah, hundred percent rejuvenators, and obviously then your and growth spirals and your hour, hour promise. promise. So you've got sixteen cards it's, of it's, extra land drops. It is interesting to be like a ramp deck, and like we have access to like Farseek in this format. Do we? Yeah, it was in it had we we do we not? Is it was that in M twelve? Uh, was that that is that, that, well, that What's I, the first core set in Pioneer? Yeah, maybe we don't. I maybe maybe it was M thirteen. What, what's is it? M14 is the first one, okay. so maybe we don't. I, I, it, that weird cutoff time, because I, I remember, like, obviously Jund, Jund had Farseek. It did. But I think it was M13, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's, let's take a look here, because I, I, I think I'm it's M13, like, so never like, mind. I feel like you would be playing that card no matter yeah, what. Yeah, so I, like, I guess we never had a two-mana, like a tradi- traditional two-mana ramp spell in, in this format. So that's why we're seeing all this Magic stuff. Magic yeah. 2013 was yeah, the last yeah, one. Yeah, 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 dang. Just just missed it because I thought it was it, I thought it was printed in um, uh, the Ravnica set, but it wasn't. So right. no, it was it was, it was original, original Ravnica. Ravnica. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but yeah, like anyway, um, you know, we see these you know these ramp creatures, but ramp that has to exist in your hand or um, three mana ramp, right? We we uh, we don't have traditional two mana ramp like we would see out of a spell, um, and uh, and yeah, like. It just works. Um, you're obviously playing 30 lands, <laughs> so you typically will have one in hand, and like that's that's real scary. I like I, I don't think I could ever like commit to uh, a ramp deck like this. That's real. I mean, I was playing the field the field fires deck in standard for a little bit. And yeah, like, yeah. You recognize that like there's going to be a point in the game where your draw steps are probably many lands in a row, and you have to hope that you're making three or four creatures each time you do it. It's true. So, that's true. That, that and, is, that and is if you are, then you're fine. But um. Man, this this uh <laughs> this mana base looks like a commander mana base. Oh, it's it's crazy. <laughs> how many words have the word temple in it? Like, or how many or cards have the word temple in it? It's crazy. Um, but yeah. It, but it's it's interesting that like a, a deck like this can exist within the format and like still still find success. Yeah, I think the format like we we see what the format's doing to try and go under. What with the man the mono black aggro decks, the uh, is it decks, the insole decks, the even the gruel aggro deck. We, we see how people are trying to go under the format. Um, but people are trying to fight to go over the format too. Like, is is devotion the best way to go over the format? Is it these ramp decks that's the best way to go over the format? Like. It's kind of interesting to see. Yeah. Um, we also had uh, what Aaron Barish playing Possibility Storm. Yeah. As a, as a way to go over the format. That's fun. So, I, I think it's kind of interesting to see where, where the format starts to settle. Like, what what is what is the deck that's the that's the big one? So, um, moving on. So we had Mono Black Aggro again in ninth place. Place. There we go. Ninth and, place. Uh, and tenth place in the hardened skills. Uh, so uh, Edgar's list is the the I, free, I don't know the team, but this is the the team. Gotcha. List. Yeah, they had the four Vivians. Man, the thing I love about this deck, look at all those fours. Yeah, mm. it's nice. That's mm. nice. This is the opposite of the Golgari list. Yes, correct. So <laughs> many fours in this this deck. This is probably the list that I would play if I was going to sleep up. Um, I just enjoy like. This, this feels like a, a list that knows what it's, it's trying to do and trying to achieve. It is a, a bit of a combination between like devotion and hardened scales, sure. but um, yeah, I just I just like how this deck looks. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, Eleventh place, though, we have a deck that uh, I know was doing pretty well on Magic Online, and that is Simic Aggro. Yes, um, and this is another once upon a time Oko deck, and this deck is. Uh, this is a, is a tough one. I am actually surprised it did not do better. Me too. Uh, um, I, I, I really thought that this was going to be one of the decks that sort of uh, took over. Yeah, I t- totally agree. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is an interesting one. So it's using lots of mana creatures uh, to get into giant you know, giant creatures and then back it up with Stubborn Denial. So yes. Love Struck Beast, Ronas the Indomitable, Steel Leaf Champion, Yorvo Lord of Garibrig, which, you know, that's fun, and Questing Beast, in addition to, I said, four Stubborn Denial, four Oko, four Once Upon a Time. Um, this has the two Vivian Arc World Rangers as well, so there's that. Um, and I like the addition of Brazen Borrow in this list to give it a little little bit more interaction. Yeah, and it, again, it's something that you can get off of your Once Upon a Time. Yeah, sure, sure <laughs> is. So. Um, but yeah, I definitely like that as well. It's just like sometimes you need... 
for these kind of decks, sometimes you just need a, a bit of a, a bounce spell is is very very helpful when you're trying to do like potentially you know something and then just so many questing beasts like when I think people were really trying to prepare for field decks and like man questing beasts don't care no it does not and I, and I like how like you know the, he has got a plan for sideboard games but against some of these green decks uh, three copies of Hunt the Hunter yes uh, and that's and becoming then, a more popular card and uh, multiple copies of Reality Shift as well which. Uh, you know, sometimes you absolutely got to exile something, and, and this does. It. Are you gonna? Are, is Reality Shift finally gonna like do something after, in after a we format? Thought it was going to like. Yeah, I mean, we blue and white is desperate for a path style thing, and you know, Reality Shift isn't the worst. Uh, the worst in into you know imita- imitation. imitation. Yeah, I was starting to say intimidation. I don't know why, but I was. Come on, so. P- pick it up, please, please let that be like a truth that I spoke many, many moons ago. <laughs> About this card. This is the longest distance call. <laughs> so, um, uh, rounding out here, then we also have um, a copy of Civic Nexus Chase Masters, uh, and we've seen a couple versions of this. But this is your Wilderness Reclamation deck, and I think that this deck is scary. I do too. I think like the presence of again one of the things that that helps fight this deck is we we lose uh, Veil of Summer. Right, um, and we have questing beasts in the format, which helps against the fogs. True, true. <laughs> um, and and like being able to thought seize these decks is also really important. Also true, and 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 the counter magic is better. Yes, um, but they have good counter magic too. Yeah, no, no doubt. So I, I th- um, you know, and they have dig through time, which is the, I think that's the scariest thing with this because dig through time and Tamio uh, collector tales. Yes, lets you see so much of your deck. In yeah. such a short amount of time. I think this is like one of the decks that obviously has the best inevitability in the format. So if you are a deck that can close them out of the game through some facet and can't attack what they're doing actively, then then yes, I think this deck is scary. But I do think that a lot of people, uh, I think a lot of people in this tournament specifically were, were prepared for it in one, one way or another, whether it's going to be it, it, killing you before it matters, thought seizing you, or, um, you know, not... Or some other various, you know, method of of kind of trying to trying to get around what they are trying to do, um, and like I don't know, like I don't know if this is like this is the the best late, late game deck anymore. If that makes any sense. I oh think, no, f- for sure. And that, I think like it, it has one of the most inevitable late games, but I don't think it gets there consistently. I, enough. Maybe not. I think this. I have to feel like this deck probably does a pretty good job against like the field of the dead decks, though depends if you're talking about bant then like if if you can protect your um teferi then you are doing a pretty good job yeah that's true i suppose that's and i true. think like that's that's your game plan like yeah that makes sense is is just like resolve a teferi protect your teferi never never lose the teferi win the game through through that like they they'll run out of fogs and they can't like actuate on their actual game plan you know you you have real mana that you can always use while their mana is, is somewhat artificial um, so I think like that's probably like what you have to be looking at. Mm-hmm. So I agree. Like Nexus is an annoying card. I don't think it should exist in any format um, because I think it's it's not well designed. I just think it's a badly designed card. Yeah, it's miserable. Um, so that's my opinion on it. I don't disagree with you. If I agreed with you and the card was banned immediately, I would just agree with you. Um, but I think like there's there there are ways to to attack it. Um, but it, I, it could get out of hand depending on like what happens in the future. Um, I think lastly we have a Sultai a Sultai pile deck, and like these 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 decks are always very appealing to me, even <laughs> if they are like actual garbage. <laughs> um, but this is piloted by. I, I think I think if the format is just trying to like I, do, are these yeah, sorry go ahead you piloted by by Raja uh, Suleiman, and it's just playing a bunch of like very expensive cards. <laughs> yeah, I just I, the. I think these decks are good, but mid range is, is in a weird place in yes. the format, and um, you know, and this is this definitely is mid range. You could say it's it's kind of controlly, but it's definitely mid range. Oh, this is yeah. I mean, like you're you're oh, literally no, no, this build for sure. Is, 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 is sick is <laughs> There's a dark confidant that you're playing mm. in your in your deck. Uh, but I think like I don't know that this deck is able to consistently beat like the mono black aggro decks, and it no. does not beat the field or the other big decks. Like you have like Assassin's Trophy, which is are helpful, but like if they're going over the top, you're probably not beating it. I, I, I don't think you're 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 getting close to beating it at game one. I think you you might have game two options. You do have Unmort Ego there hanging out in your sideboard, which is helpful. Yeah. Um. And then the, uh, the aforementioned Questing Beast, and this is also another this is a Vital Force deck, so. But the the Simic aggro decks and those like Gruel aggro decks, that's where this deck has a chance to go. 
Yeah. Yes. I mean, when you're when you're looking at when you're looking at believe them, like they're they're playing like spies as as their their two additional like discard spells. And I think that's a good call in the format if you're oh, expecting so. like Simic Aggro being the most popular deck. It's like cool. I'll, I'll play you despise and I'll take your Oko or take your Questing Beast or or your your um, Steel Leaf Champion or right. what have you. But for Devotion, I'll take your Nissa. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I think I think that's pretty yeah pretty important for sure. So I I like this his build because of the despises and because of Clinton Steve Siphoner. But I'm I'm with you. I I don't think these decks are actually very good. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, but. So. That's that's kind of what top sixteen to pioneer. I still I still think pioneer looks good. I still think that when I watch people stream pioneer, that they are playing against a lot of like weird decks still, and nothing's like you know. I, it, it feels like you know what a good open modern feels like, where there's a lot of viable things. It's still the wild west. There's still people playing, like I said, inverter of truth, Jace like decks. And that's the four mana Jace from War of the Spark that allows you to win when you don't when you draw cards from your empty deck. Yeah, that one. There's a there's a bunch of builds of uh, what's the Delve creature from Soul Flare. Soul Flare. So there's a Soul Flare deck running around. Who, yeah. One of the local players told me that he was very upset he couldn't find Soul Flares because they're sold out everywhere. He's like, I just want them. I gotta play. Let me play. <laughs> <laughs> I have one Soul Flare. Nice. Just, Hang on to it. It's going to be a prize. Oh, um, it's it's <laughs> mine. It's mine forever. So, but yeah, there's a lot of cool things to do. So I've been playing the blue white. Well, I, I haven't played much this week. It's been crazy. But yeah. I've been playing like blue white monument, mm-hmm. and like I, I still think, unfortunately, because mid range isn't very good. There's a middle ground where it doesn't sit very well, but it does well against the aggro decks because yeah. you get to play all the reflector mages and detention uh, mages. Yeah. Uh, you also get Westville Abbey, and Westville Abbey is. Real good. It's a good magic card. Real good. There's a lot of a lot of decks that can't beat it. Yeah. So uh I do think there are some still thing there's still some things that are conspicuously absent though, like no mono red is is interesting. Mono red exists, it's just not it's just not the, and, 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 the, and, and, the and aggro deck du jour. It, it's, its final form probably hasn't been found yet. Definitely. Uh, not. no Phoenix in the top sixteen. No, I do think there was a list that did go seven one or better though. Yeah, I believe there was as well. But I'm just saying, it was, like, and it was playing I, Merfolk I, Secret Keeper. Ooh, I, oh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think that like that's interesting to me because I did think that once we got through this first wave of bans, like something related to Phoenix, like probably Treasure Cruise was going to see a ban, and and maybe not. You know, I I think like it, I think we're more likely to see it one more ban that's green in nature. And it's probably going to affect some of these decks that are trying to go over, you know, maybe over the top. And, and I, I could see, depending on the evolution of these um, Field of the Dead decks, I could see them getting hit with something. But unfortunately, the only real thing you hit them with is Field of the Dead. I think so. so I think like that's... Uh, and, like, and that's unfortunate because like, I think, like, you know, it doesn't have to be scape shift necessarily, but, like, um, our promise and like is is a sweet find for those decks, but the problem is you just can't get answers to that card in the format fast enough, and Field of Ruins not enough. So, we'll see. I, you you have some cards that are you know still you still have options are and Unmoored Ego is one of them, I guess. Um, mm. Unmoored Ego. Um, what's the There's Lost Legacy is the other one yeah, for, for if you just if you just want to play something that's in mono black. Uh, you technically also we have the one from Return to Ravnica, right? What's the red black right or something game Slaughter Games? Yeah, sla- I, sla- I don't know if that can get lands. Oh, it's a good call. I don't know. I just know it can't be countered. Yeah, but it's also four mana. Which yeah, it and stain be. the mind is another one that I th- and, 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 is that is that one in? Yes, that one is in because that's okay. M fourteen. Okay, cause, or M fifteen. Because I mean, it's cord is in too. I mean, that, that, it's crazy yes. that card's seeing no play. I like cord in um, uh, like uh, the collective company. company. Yeah, like I, I think like those decks just haven't been figured out yet. Well, and I think the problem is that mid range hasn't been figured out yet. Yeah. Like mid range is just in a weird spot right now. So, uh, what again? Whether that is more bannings or just more shifting on the formats part, that'll be sort of interesting to see. And again. And we're looking at 16 decks from an invitational, not the broader format. I'm excited for the week of PTQs. Yeah. To get a lot of information I there. I agree. So um, I'm going to throw something at you. You tell me how I feel. I don't want to talk about standard. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I've enjoyed this Pioneer talk, and I just don't want to talk about standard. Yeah, that's fine. We, have, we had Twitch rivals. Mike Sigrist won it. Yeah, he played a Gagari Adventures deck. We'll see what the format comes out for them. Maybe we'll talk about it next week since we'll have yeah. the GP and we'll have that. I don't know. But I, I'm looking at how long the episode is right now, like, and I'm like, nah, I just don't want to talk yeah. about Twitch. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to go from this like cool pioneer talk to be like, oh, by the way, there was a standard post Oko tournament. Uh, to be fair, like I think that is the most interested that we've been in standard for a long time. Yep, but I 
Don't even want to talk nope. about it. Um, Slaughter, uh, Slaughter Game, excuse me, I, I don't know, is uh, not land. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, fair enough then. Um, is Stain the Mine on land? I'm checking right now. So that yeah, that's interesting. I'm trying to think like what are some other ways? Yeah, Stain the Mine is non land. Okay, as well. so so we have at least two ego effects. You know the uh, that we have Field of the Dead and. But technically, encroaching wastes is something you could play, though that doesn't feel exciting either. Um, yeah, that's that's tough. Uh, you're probably going to need another good answer uh, for Field of the Dead. Otherwise, Field of the Dead might, yo. Oh, never mind. Lost Legacy is non non land card. Jeez. Oh. So you have Unmoored Ego. Unmoored Ego and Field of the Dead. Or in right. Field of Ruin. Yeah, they were really afraid of you naming land cards. Because like, the one thing that we don't have here that Modern does have is like Modern, you literally do get to play like a Ponza style deck. Like, yeah. they, you know, and it's not super popular in the format, but like you could get Stone Rained. Uh, yeah, 100%. And like, uh, obviously, you're not like going to get demolished in Pioneer. With Unmoored Ego, you can only nab four of any card. So like, that's that's the, the you know, Unmoored Ego, you can only nab four copies. Is that a problem? No, that's the reason why it can get lands. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yes, correct. Gotcha. The other ones don't have that. I, I was the, like, I was don't have like, that limiter. No, that makes sense. That yes. makes sense. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see with that. And the field decks might just not be fast enough, but I think those decks and the um, the Nexus decks do represent a scary conundrum for mid range. And I think like if you want decks like yo. Um, the Delirium deck, if you want decks like the, your Soul Tide decks, if you want these these. I don't know, these green decks <laughs> that do something else to exist, um, yeah. you got to have mid-range. Yeah, I, so. I think so, too. So, um, But again, like... Oh, and control. It'd be nice if there was control. I mean, people have found success with blue-white control. Yeah, blue-white um, control has seen some play. I know there's been some Esper Dragons or, or just blue-white Dragons builds that have seen some, some play. So, um, I, I, I think, like, there, there are decks that can, can do play and are successful, but I, I think, like... I, I think what you're seeing right now, and it, it could be Oko, it could be other things, but um, Pioneer still suffers from the same problem that, that Standard has been suffering from, which is you know, when you have these very cheap, very powerful permanents of varying types, specifically Planeswalkers. But now in the format of Planeswalkers, you have Smuggler's Copter, you have this, like, counter magic gets tough. Yeah. And then you have to find a reason to stay in blue white and not move into like black green to get a yeah. decay or assassin's trophy. Yeah, exactly. Like but once you're once you're there and you're in the Thoughtseize territory, like then you're sort of stuck into a game plan where yeah, you better hope that they can't answer your like Liliana the last hope because if they have something bigger than that, yeah. Yeah, or it just like you just you don't have that mana leak sort of effect where it's like right. you know, quench is Quench, Quench is not really is a not it. Sensor is a is a good one in the format we we, we see people play. You know, it, it did some work in standard and can do some work here. But yeah. uh, it is weird that we're kind of like, man, I wish we had mana leak because there's we don't want it in standard. So maybe it's again maybe I, it's Lumgar scorn. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. Do you think like it would be it would be too too? Um, I, I think you forget what mana leak does. Probably I we, I, I didn't I didn't does. really play because that was back in Delver days right Blue yes. White Delver had yes. Mana Leak still but Mana Leak just invalidates like turn two plays in general yeah um and like forces it forces the whole format to be either slower or more tempo oriented and I I, I in in Pioneer I think it would be okay I think you could get around it in Standard I think it would be. Too, not, too not, much. Not good. I just Maybe wonder. It was I very not good the last time. Yeah, I just wonder what the. Trust me, my signed Christopher Rush ones are sitting there. I'll play them in a heartbeat. <laughs> I just wonder, like, what, like, what's the, what's the slot then? What, what, what do they build? I, the card crafting is a very interesting thing for when you're trying to like hit certain spots. I mean, I think you're seeing right now, Stubborn Isle is one is a, is is very good. Yeah, a number of decks. Um, so Quench is playable, but like your Spell Pierce and the Mystical Dispute is still pretty good. Oh so. yeah. No, no doubt about that. Like mystical dispute is like a main deckable. Yeah, and mystical dispute I think is a well designed like hate card. You know what yeah. I mean? So, but we'll see. I, I'm I'm excited for Pioneer. I, I said I think like I've already tried. I've already played like f- four ish different decks. Like just like to get to play games and try it out. And like um, you know, so Dave, who we mentioned, did not do super well in the Invitational. Unfortunately, I think he he conceded out of game two or out of day two. Yeah, because they were in time. Like, um, but he and uh, some uh, Bobby Colgrove. Yeah, Ding has gotten a mess in a while. Brewed up a blue red dragon deck. Looks sweet. And I think that's what I'm going to take for a run on Sunday. Yeah, it looks fun. So, and I like the idea that like it's felt like we haven't had that in the format for a while. Standard included, where like you can just brew up a deck and go take it for a spin. Because mm-hmm. standard got solved. This standard got solved super quickly. 
yeah, I feel like Sandra got solved before the set released. It's, it's, yeah, Sandra was like, yeah, it was, it was upsetting how quickly Sandra was solved. And part of that's arena, um, yeah. and part of that's just like the when you print cards that are so much, like just a, much more powerful than anything else, you're stuck playing them. So, and modern feels stagnant. That's true. Pioneers are our only. Though I do want to go cast on Forge Mystics. Yeah. Well, I mean, you'll you'll always have that, right? Yeah. I just it, eventually when they do unban Swinter Twin. And then I can play... <laughs> play it all? Twin Blade. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's not going to happen, fam. Shut up! <laughs> Just saying. All I Be happy want. with your Stoneforge Mystics. All I want for Christmas is twins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. They're not going to give you your one and two and three and four, <laughs> four <laughs> and five and six Deceiver Exarch. I'm sorry. Your two front Deceiver Exarchs whatever <laughs> but i think it's going to be uh, everything for our show this week so thank you so much for listening um i, I believe we're going to take next week off because again we, we will be probably celebrating uh the the the, the, the time with our families uh, yeah well yeah that's fair i mean and there's uh, also probably going to be the pioneer announcement that's probably about it and it's probably going to be nothing uh, we have a gp this weekend Oh yeah, I guess that's true. It's local. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we'll worry about your. We'll I, I, I thought we might cast next week, but the week after, when oh. when we had Thanksgiving behind us, would make Fair more enough. sense. But well, we'll you, see. Whatever. I, trust me, it's I'm just, I'm not going to dictate it because you've been. I, everyone needs to know that Morgan is a wonderful friend and very accommodating because I have made uh, a recording cycle uh, to borrow Morgan's word from earlier in the cast. Hell, so <laughs> uh, you know what? It's it's a it is a a challenge that is easy to overcome. So I am okay with it. So, um, well, we'll see. We might record next week or the week after or whatever. Who, who knows? Who cares? I do. You all do probably. <laughs> the, the, the patrons are like, definitely hey, we those. care. <laughs> definitely those people. Um, but uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you can. We have multiple methods of doing so. You can um, shoot us.